Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Game Cave. My name is Michael of Game Cave, and today I'm going to talk to you about my theory of Zelda Breath of the Wild's placement on the overall Zelda timeline. I believe it is located at least 10,000 years after the events of Spirit Tracks. This would mean that it's located on the adult timeline. You may be thinking to yourself, that doesn't really make any sense. And there's no evidence that points to that conclusion. It might not seem clear to you now, but there is more hidden evidence placing it on this timeline than what I found for the other two. If Breath of the Wild truly follows Spirit Tracks, then that means the Hyrule from Breath of the Wild is indeed the new Hyrule that was founded by Zelda and Link of the Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass. If you look closely at the maps of Breath of the Wild and Spirit Tracks, you will see geographic similarities. Snowy mountains in the northwest, volcanic mountains in the northeast, grasslands in the central area, and the wetlands slash oceans in the southeast corridor. The only major difference between these two maps is the location of the desert. Gerudo Desert in Breath of the Wild is located in the southwest corner, while the desert in Spirit Tracks is right above the ocean region. If you look closely at the Spirit Tracks map, the area where the portal to the Dark World is located is blocked off by a large, highly elevated rock formation that keeps it separated from everything else. This is very similar to the large mountains that create borders around the Gerudo Desert in Breath of the Wild. Also, we need to take into account that this was more than 10,000 years after Spirit Tracks and geographic conditions can change. Not too drastically, but they can change. Similarly to how the Lanyaru Desert in Skyward Sword changed from an ocean region into a desert region in a matter of 1,000 years. Perhaps after Link and Zelda defeated Maladus in the Dark Realm, the area dried up and became a barren wasteland that would soon become the home to the Gerudos. The desert area that was located in Spirit Track could transform into more ocean or wetlands of some kind. Unlike the map of games such as Twilight Princess or A Link to the Past, both of which are on other timelines, the placement of Hyrule Castle in respect to the other geographic regions makes the most sense when comparing spirit tracks to Breath of the Wild. This is where speculation comes in. Where did the spirit tracks and the Tower of Spirits go in Breath of the Wild if it takes place in the new Hyrule? Just like geographical things can change, structural changes can also occur. And in reality, the spirit tracks map is just as big as Breath of the Wild. You have to use a train to cross it for goodness sakes. This portion will include a lot of speculation on everything between the events of Wind Waker and Breath of the Wild, if it does actually take place on this timeline. As many of us Zelda fans know, Ganon slash Ganondorf is never truly dead. He just keeps coming back. Everyone just assumes that he took his last stand in the Wind Waker. After being stabbed through the head by Link and turned into stone, King Daphnius stays below and drowns alongside Ganondorf's statue and the rest of old Hyrule. But what if it wasn't the end? What if the spirit of Ganon, which resides inside Ganondorf, is only sealed inside the stone husk of the Gerudo body he has had since the events of Ocarina of Time? We have seen all forms of Ganon, sealed off and trapped in other dimensions before. His spirit sealed away in the power of the Master Sword. The stone husk of Ganondorf may just be like the stone pedestal in Wind Waker. It is keeping Ganon at bay, and he is waiting to be released and break free once again. I predict that years after New Hyrule was founded, many races started to reside there. The Goron are already present in Spirit Tracks, so it is not unlikely that the rest would follow suit. Soon the Ritos came from Dragon Roost Island and joined in. They replaced the already present Anuki, being a very inferior race, Anuki either died out or evolved into some other wildlife over the course of the 10,000 plus years. The Zoras make a return as well. There is an issue with Zora and Rito existing in the same time, since Rito evolved from Zora, but this can be explained as well. Even though Zora did not exist in the way we see them in other games, 
there are some Zora that did not entirely evolve into Rito. Many of the main Zora in Breath of the Wild resemble undersea wildlife, including whales, hammerhead sharks, manta rays, and the more common dolphin look. There is not another Zelda game that includes this much variety in Zora types that I can think of. Not to mention, they all resemble a sea creature. It is almost like they were sea creatures that evolved back into Zoras once they found out about the new Hyrule. The Sheikah also started to come back into play. Returning to their original spot as protectors of the royal family, they built the Divine Beasts and the Guardians to further protect the royal family and its people. So they began searching for relics back in the ocean above old Hyrule. They used their advanced Sheikah technology to allow them to excavate the ruins of the old Hyrule, and they pooled up ancient treasures and explored ruins that would inspire them to recreate many architectural wonders, such as the Temple of Time and Lon Lon Ranch. This would explain why these places don't match up with their original locations in Ocarina of Time. The most important thing they pulled up is the Master Sword plunged into the head of Ganondorf's statue. They returned it to the kingdom and presented it to the royal family. At this moment, Ganon, within the rocky prison, breaks free due to the fact that he can sense the reincarnated Hylia, aka Zelda, and Link in the area. Although Ganon is not his normal blue beasty self. He has spent so much time within the seal that his true form was distorted. Now in a large, gaseous form, he tries to reconstruct his physical form, but Link acted fast. He picked up the Master Sword, which was no longer plunged into the statue, but now on the ground, and struck Ganondorf, weakening him and preventing him from regaining all of his strength. The Guardians and Divine Beasts were activated by their respective pilots and began to attack Ganon as well. Out of nowhere, Zelda retrieved the ancient strength of the Triforce and aided Link in his effort to seal Ganon away. Link, Zelda, the Divine Beasts, and the Guardians all worked together to seal Ganon once more, but he would return again in the events of Breath of the Wild. I want to clarify that some of the races in Breath of the Wild have only ever been seen in the adult timeline. All other races, such as Zora, the Goron, the Gerudo, and the Sheikah have been seen in games before the timeline split. I am referring to the Rito and the Koroks. Both Rito and Koroks made their first appearance in Wind Waker, which takes place on the adult timeline. Rito adapted from Zora to be able to survive on the islands above the sea. and Koroks adapted from the Kokiri to better survive and disguise themselves on the islands around the sea. It wouldn't make sense for Rito and Koroks to appear out of nowhere thousands of years following games such as Twilight Princess or A Link to the Past, not to mention one of the most important and crucial characters seen in Breath of the Wild that makes this timeline so convincing. Beetle. Beetle predominantly appears in the adult timeline. The only other games he appears in are Skyward Sword and Minish Cap. Both of these occurred before the timeline split. Beetle is not even mentioned, referenced to, or even given a look-alike in any of the other two timelines. This further proves the fact that Breath of the Wild is located on the adult timeline. Before the new DLC came out, I was on the fence about this theory. I only had a few pieces of evidence, and it was hard to confirm those things from in-game context clues. In fact, there's no one in the world who wanted this game to appear in the child timeline more than me. Twilight Princess is one of my favorite Zelda games of all time. I enjoy the story, the scenery, and the action. Majora's Mask is also high up on my list. I did take the time to recreate the more important masks from the game, after all. So when I saw the Bridge of Hylia in one of the first gameplay trailers, and how my Wolf Link amiibo would be used in the game, I instantly jumped to conclusions and made the decision that it would be placed somewhere in the child timeline after Twilight Princess. As I played the game, I became more engaged in the story. I began to realize that it had elements of all existing Zelda games on every timeline. Names of places, locations, people, things like that. But being the Zelda fan that I am, I needed to make a decision on where it belonged. 
I started doing research, and I played other games to refresh my memory of them as well. I read through the Hyrule Historia, and I still came out short. But once the new DLC dropped, and we all got to explore the vast world of Hyrule again in search of Misko's hidden goodies scattered across Hyrule Field, that is when I came to my conclusion. I found all of the new armor sets and equipment and realized that the only ones NPCs react to were the Phantom Armor from Spirit Tracks and the Tingle Clothes. If this game were to occur on the Child timeline, wouldn't you think that the NPCs would react to wearing the Majora's Mask? Seeing as Majora, the villain, was in the Child timeline, wouldn't you think they would react to seeing Midna's helmet for the same reasons? You might be writing in the comments as I'm saying this, but Michael, Tingle was in both the child and adult timelines, and they still react to the Tingle gear. Yes, but they react in a scared and frightened way. In Majora's Mask, Tingle was not considered a threat. He may have been kind of a freak, but not a threat. And in Four Swords Adventures, his home is the hub world, and he is not considered a criminal. Just a little stingy. Wind Waker is the only game where Tingle is seen in prison and considered a threat to the rest of the world. So if the people in Breath of the Wild were going to freak out at the sight of Tingle, it would be because he was considered a criminal in the past. The reason that people freak out at the sight of the Phantom Armor is because in both Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, Phantoms were considered soulless and highly territorial individuals, whose main objective was to keep people, mainly thieves, from going where they weren't supposed to. Stories were most likely passed down by survivors who faced phantoms, and fear spread throughout the kingdom. Not to mention that the actual phantom armor that Misko stole is pinkish purple with glowing pink eyes, and the Hyrule insignia on the back. The only time phantoms appear like this are when they are possessed by Zelda's disembodied spirit in spirit tracks. So if this armor exists in Breath of the Wild, and it was stolen from Hyrule Castle, then that means that at one time the spirit of Zelda possessed that armor. And the only time that has ever happened in canon is on the adult timeline. Other smaller details are certain treasures found in the game. One in particular, Star Fragments. Star Fragments first made an appearance in, you guessed it, Spirit Tracks the only game to ever have them, except for Breath of the Wild. Not only that, but they look very similar in shape. The colors are not exactly the same, but I'd say it was Creative Liberties. The description of Star Fragments in Spirit Tracks states that this treasure was rumored to have fallen from the sky. Just like another Star Fragment that I know, it is as if they are only found in New Hyrule. I understand that there is a cutscene where Zelda refers to the Embers of Twilight i.e. Twilight Princess, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is a reference to Twilight Princess. But even if it is, it is quite possible that the 10,000 year plus span between Spirit Tracks and Breath of the Wild, another Link could have had a run-in with the Twilight Realm, in some capacity. The Twilly are the interlopers that first invaded the Sacred Realm to try and steal the Triforce, way before the events of Ocarina of Time. That means that the Twilight Realm does actually exist between the timeline splits, meaning that Link could definitely interact with the Twilight Realm in any timeline and not just the child timeline. We just haven't received another Twilight Realm based game in another timeline thus far. In conclusion, you are free to think any possibility you want. As I said a couple of minutes ago, when playing the game, I did realize that there were many connections to almost every single Zelda timeline thus far. So if you think that it belongs in the Child timeline, that's fine. If you think it belongs on the Fallen Hero timeline, that's fine. If you don't think it goes anywhere on the timeline, that's fine. I simply believe this game is on the adult timeline. And if you agree with me, then I thank you and please be sure to leave a like. And if you don't agree with me, drop a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. I would love to have a civil conversation with you about the topic. And as always, have a great day and I will see you next time on Game Cave.